Hi everyone, welcome to Crowdfunding Countdown. My name is Chris George, and today we're going to take a look at every single board game campaign finishing up for this week up until next Tuesday. This is a slow brain week. I mean, often it's a slow brain week every week because that's just the life that I exist in, but this week will be even slower <laughs> as my fog of a brain boots up and cranks into high gear uh, as we go along. As always, huge shout out to my newest patrons. And now that that's done, shout out to all of my patrons for their continued support. I really appreciate you continually supporting the channel. And if you didn't see the five reasons you shouldn't back Cthulhu Death May Die, you might want to go check it out and write a comment on that and subscribe if you haven't. Most people, I assume, are subscribed to this particular video series because I feel it's the most niche one that I do. And if you're not, what are you doing? Hit subscribe. Come on. Make me feel good about my life, please. Oh, please. Oh, God, please. But if you haven't checked it out, check out the five reasons you shouldn't back Cthulhu Death May Die because you can win a copy thanks to one of those generous patrons who is choosing to remain anonymous. Like that famed poet, Anonymous Contributor. That's a, that's a Homestar Runner joke. But I wanted to front load this video with that to make sure you all have a chance to win a copy of Cthulhu Death May Die, which also corresponded with this channel's 200th video, which is kind of cool. Kind of cool that it worked out that way. I didn't even plan it. I, I would love to take credit that I did, but I didn't. I'm a dumb idiot. And now you all know it. <laughs> but let's get right ahead and move right on into the week because we have a big week. And we are going to start off with Patriot, an immersive one to six player social deduction board game. And if you know anything about me, you know that I love social deduction. So I'm excited to check this one out where you can save or assassinate the president of Carmonia. Deeply thematic with over 300 cards, 36 mini minis, and engaging stories. This is actually one that I, I also am uh, really excited to talk about because I saw them at World Series. At the World Series of Board Gaming, which, if you don't know, I have been involved in and am in charge of basically producing all of the post-production commentary, which is going to be ramping up over on the World Series channel. So if you're interested in watching me commentate on a Brass Birmingham game for four hours... Honestly, it's a great game. Go over to that YouTube channel and check that out as well. But we're not here for that. We are here to check out Patriot, which I saw at the World Series, and that makes me excited to look at it. So let's go. Rulebook two-thirds of the way down the page, not with the gameplay explanation. Why? I don't know. Yeah, there's a picture of the board. All right, this one's pretty simple. Uh, I mean, all games are pretty simple if you're just talking about them in two to three sentences, and that's what we're going to do here. You're going to get a roll and a character, and your role might be the president, or your role might be the assassin, and you want to murder the president, or your role might be to save the city first, and then save the president if it's convenient, but really just focus on saving the city. Because there's riots going on, clearly there's a reason why this president has been targeted for assassination, and probably isn't really great to be in power, but good thing you and your corrupt statesmen have only the president's best interest in hearts and not the city whatsoever. Who knew that the assassins were the good guys? Now, I wonder if I say, kill the president, if I'll be arrested or secret service will come to my house, but that feels like the right call in this world. <laughs> But you see here, we have the board, and there'll be a number of different spaces, and these little lines right here, they're kind of hard to see, but they divide it into separate areas where you can use your influence. And you're going to have three actions, basically, on your turn, or, or three different types of things that you can do on your turn. You have, like, ten action points. You're going to move around the board, going to these different spaces, collecting influence, and adding them to the five assassination letters that they assassin calmly sent to the president saying excuse me sir if you do not give me six science influence well i will murder you today and then tomorrow you must give me seven finance influence or i will murder you today a very cordial assassin which is nice and of course the president taking that firm stance as what you always should do and negotiate with terrorists and just adhere to every single one of their demands. <laughs> it's 79 bucks US for the core box or $100-ish Canadian for the core box 106. And then the deluxe box gives you a bunch of stuff that you don't want or need. Like a neoprene mat and a Carmonian dice tower and a Patriot poster. There's the things that people probably don't care about. Here they are. An enamel pin. Ooh. A digital art book. So you get all those things in that deluxe package if you don't want it whatsoever. Uh, and then we get to the shipping, 
which if you're in the US is 20 bucks, UK, Europe, and Australia, you can kind of get it for 20 bucks in, I think that's 20 bucks shipping for Australia, because it's a Australian company, and that's why there's this little star, but it's a very confusing breakdown. And then for me, the rest of the world, to get to Canada, $56, so... It's really like $130, $150, and that's way too much for something that looks fun, but also looks like you could just play Dead of Winter and have a similar experience. I think there's pro there's more social deduction, it looks like, in this than Dead of Winter. Dead of Winter feels more co-op, especially because you're guaranteed to have somebody bad in this game, and Dead of Winter you're not, but... Yeah, it, it looks fun. It definitely looks fun. Uh, check it out if you're interested. That finishes Wednesday, November 2nd at 12 p.m. Nope, not covering that. Moving along to Familiars and Foes. Plays one to five spell-slinging elemental familiars fighting cooperatively to rescue their witches and wizards, which looks like something that was drawn by the Powerpuff Girls, specifically drawn by the characters of the Powerpuff Girls and not the artists behind the Powerpuff Girls. I would like to make that distinction perfectly clear. Rulebook halfway down the incredibly long page. I mean, I do like the names of these characters. Specifically, Nutterson the Third, Mimsy, and Figget. Forget about it. All right. And I will talk about this one. It, it's it's meeting the bar for being spoken of just barely, but but I'm gonna put my jaded, cynical hat at bay. Also, because I left it still in that Olive Garden. But it could be a combo of coming through just a bunch of campaigns that just look so bad. I couldn't even make fun of them in a funny way. This one, if you have kids, you might be interested. It's very, very simple. The mechanics are super duper simple. You're going to choose one of three actions, the physical attack, artifact, or cast a spell. And basically, you're rolling a dice for each and see if it hits. But there's sort of that illusion of choice and you'll be going through the spells. And if you do one of each spell and, and kind of do a checklist, you reveal uh, new spells. And the whole purpose is that your witches and wizards with whom you are bonded with, they have captured your soul and, and bound you to them for all eternity. It doesn't matter how cute you are, you just remember you are enslaved in eternal servitude. Uh, I think that's important to recognize as a familiar. That's your life and purpose. And when you go, the wizard will stay alive. But when the wizard goes, you're just extinct as well, is usually the familiar uh, <laughs> mythos. Even if, maybe it's not this one, but it's this one. Don't tell the children. So your witches and wizards have been kidnapped, and so in order to save yourself and your own life... I'm trying to find a picture of the board. Oh, here we go. This is a good gift. Your witches and wizard, wizards have been kidnapped, and they are being blocked by all these foes. And you have to take down these foes, and they'll just have a bunch of health points, and you just choose who you attack and what spells you use on them. You know, it seems cute for young children. It's 49 bucks US, 67 Canadian, and then all these people, wow. Minimum 14 bucks shipping to the US, 21 to Canada. So for me, it's $70, $90, which is just the most ludicrous thing I've ever heard. But if you live in the US and you have young kids and you think this art style might really jive with them, it's a very, it looks like a very simple game. So check it out if you're interested. That finishes November 3rd at 9 a.m. Moving along to Snakes of Wrath, a tile Lang strategy game that has raised almost a quarter of a million Canadian dollars, so at least 10 US. This is one that I don't understand why it's doing so well, but again, I'm a jaded pile of garbage. I mean, you do get a custom printed cloth snakes sack, so. It's, this is not bad. This is not bad. And I love this. It says, games last around 15 to 20 minutes as two players or teams compete against each other to build, heal, blah, blah, blah. No, it's not teams. It's clearly a two-player game. Don't just include the term teams to make people think that they could play with more than two people. Because you clearly can't. You're going to be a red team or a blue team. And you're going to be drawing these tiles. You're going to have a hand of tiles. And then you're going to put the tiles out in order to strategically lay a trap for the other snakes and gobble up the other snake's color as quickly as possible. I will say that if you live in the U.S., it says domestic U.S. shipping is included, so that's nice. So your cost of a copy is $50. For me, it's 69 Canadian. <laughs> 69! Uh, which works out to be like $90. 69 U.S., I should have said. <laughs> Did he just say 69? No, I'm sorry. And that works out to be like $90 Canadian for a very simple tile-laying game. I don't know why 
this is doing so well. It's just it's just a normal tile end game. I mean, it looks good. The quality of the tiles is going to clearly be there. And the gameplay is probably, you know, fine. It's really evidenced by this very detailed gameplay section that they have right here, which shows you for the four actions you can do and doesn't explain how to do them. So that's helpful, I think. That must be what's getting people really, really going. Or you have a bunch of early Christmas shoppers who are getting this to make sure that it's there in time for Christmas. I mean, I know a lot of people enjoy snakes, but this isn't, this just looks fine. I'm, I'm sorry, Snakes of Rathi. You know what looks, the, the video itself looks better than the game will ever be. I, I can say that confidently. But if you're interested, hey, maybe you love snakes and you love milky tiles, um, then this is definitely something you should check out. And uh, that finishes Thursday, November 3rd at 9.57 a.m. I swear there will be some good campaigns at some point in this video. I promise that. Well, no, Patriot was good. Patriot looked good. It was just too expensive to get to me. All right, let's see what we've got next, which is Outrun the Bear. The Frantic Bear Escaping Board Game. And this just feels like a personal attack, honestly. This just... This doesn't even feel like a real campaign. This just feels like somebody wanted to trigger me. Because I don't know if I've mentioned my entire family was kidnapped by bears. How bear you? That's all I have to say about that. How bear you? I certainly can't bear the thought of learning more about this game. This is just rude. Seriously. This is just, this is just, this is triggering. <laughs> this is horrifying. <laughs> and this is, uh, this says, Outrun the Bear provides the exciting and chaotic experience of attempting to flee from a hungry bear without leaving the safety of your couch. And at this point, it just it just brings back bad memories, you know? Even this, light but crunchy, we get it. The bear's gonna gnaw upon all of my family's bones when it gets tired of them cooking and cleaning in its cave. I don't even think I can cover this, but it, it looks better than the friggin' five campaigns of filth that I've had to sift through that you haven't been subjected to. So crawl, trip, and sprint through this race for your lives. Let's on my family crest, after the bear took it and uh, and made us change it. <laughs> Rulebook terrifyingly, you know, almost 50% down the page, but, but not really. And it's not like it's even true to life, really, because this is not how the bears kidnapped my family. It wasn't a mad chase, all right? It was a very elaborate catfishing situation that all of them fell for. And some people say it's on them, but I, I prefer not to shame the victim, okay? And the fact that it was the same account Honey Boo Boo Bear 69 that they all fell for. Well, maybe they just weren't talking to each other, okay? Maybe they were intrigued by the numerous misspellings that happened when the bear was trying to claw at the computer. And maybe when the police traced the IP address and went to the scene of the crime and saw the computer with its various keys ripped out <laughs> because, again, of the sharp bear claws, maybe that should have been a tip off for the re subsequent members of my family who knew all the grisly details of the story. No pun intended, and yet fell for it anyway. I don't know how it happened, okay? I've been asking myself those questions for years now. Years, I guess it's been years. It has been years, yeah. I love in here that you can sprint for using cards or you can crawl. There's no, there's no in-between. You're either sprinting or you're crawling. You're sprinting as fast as you can to get, to get away from that bear or you've tripped and are now crawling as fast as you can to get away from that bear. And honestly, this is, it feels true to life. Just give the bears a degree in cybersecurity and we're, we're all set. I also love this. <laughs> I think we have to find out what this is. Should I run from a bear in real life? Please see the National Park Service's website for bear safety tips. Let's see the accuracy of these. And if it has anything about the bear's usage of computers to lure people. Staying safe around bears. What should you do if you see a bear? Seeing a bear in the wild is a special treat for a visitor to a national park. While it's an exciting moment, it is important to remember that bears in national parks are wild and can be dangerous. Obviously, their behavior is sometimes unpredictable. Their behavior is always unpredictable because they're always switching up their styles, even though I know I said, and I'm not going back on this story, that my entire family fell for the same trap. That is true, but various bears 
use various different screen names so you must always stay vigilant see it even says each bear and each experience is unique there's no single strategy that will work in all situations and guaranteed safety most bear encounters end without injury yeah they just end in kidnapping and it does say if a bear happens to surprise you stay calm do not surprise the bear if it's unaware of your presence and i'm glad they're really listing out these sorts of things that if you see a bear in the wild you shouldn't hide behind a tree and jump out and go gotcha because that's going to end poorly for you they'll make a movie all about it like the movie backcountry which again i've talked about it before <laughs> It's about a whole story about this woman being attacked by a bear and like her and her husband going out or her getting proposed and her husband gets murdered by the bear uh, because I guess the bear had too many kidnapped victims already and he didn't want them to know that's where he was holding all of the kidnapped victims. And so he attacks them both and the husband dies and she almost dies and she's going to make her way back in the provincial park. And it's like, oh, this is based on a true story. You know what the true story was? I looked it up. The true story is that bears exist. That was the true story that that movie is based upon. Bears exist. <laughs> they met this creepy hunter in the woods too. And that plot line never went anywhere. It was just because they needed something to fill up the movie with. Oh my God. This should be Barians. What are you doing, Run From the Bear? Even I know that. Anyway, it's a very, very simple game. You play a card, the cards will do various things, and you can run or you can throw cards away, and you can always draw two cards, and then the bear will chase you, and you have to outrun the bear. And honestly, I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> I'll put my own personal trauma aside for one second, or a, a few seconds, at least till the end of this segment, to consult you on value, as I know is the purpose of you being here. I love that they have this right here, base 39, deluxe 49. You can see the difference of what you get if you want some acrylic standees, and you want just a little bit better card quality you can get it uh shipping ten dollars to the u.s 29 to canada nine to the uk so depending where you live it might be okay it's horrible for canada and is not a consideration for me uh but 49 dollars us for something that is funny and unique and might be pulled out to be a party game i mean the gameplay itself is not going to be replayable it's all about the theme here which is just light but crunchy jeez anyway enough of that <laughs> That finishes Thursday, November 3rd at 10 a.m. If you're interested, let's move on to Rising Waters, a tabletop board game based on the 1927 Mississippi flood from Central Michigan University Press. Rulebook phrase not found, yeah. I'm still going to talk about this one, even though it doesn't have a rule book, because I like the I like the initiatives that it's putting forth. It's taking a point in history, 1927, where the Mississippi Delta was flooding, and particularly where players experience life through the lens of African-American plight. In this game, you will confront two, fro two forces, racism from white landowners and the power of nature. Both are horrible. But I would take the power of nature over white landowners any day. And I wish there was a rule book here. I mean, like, the the... What they're saying feels nice to me. You're going to have individual player abilities and powers that you can upgrade, and then you basically just have to manage the board and not get swept away is how it seems in this brief outline that they're outlining, but it is just a brief outline. And without a rule book and an actual breakdown of what is in this, I can't really recommend it. But they do have a bunch of people who I respect as uh, cultural consultants, like Our Family Plays Games and Jason from Shelf Stories. And, uh, you know, that, that adds a little bit of clout in my eyes, honestly. And I like bringing forward things that focus on representation and good representation and, and experiencing that in different ways but unfortunately there's not enough game here they don't even have a a video showing showcasing they just have a bunch of prototype pictures and saying yes it does this thing but without it actually explaining how it does that thing i don't trust that it'll be as fleshed out as it needs to be to be a good game so i don't know about that one but i wanted to mention it if you want to check that out a little bit more it seems like it's really approaching it from an academic perspective and not necessarily a board gaming perspective, which is fine, but it's not necessarily something that I look for or will get longevity on my shelf that I'll be able to bring out to friends or various people. So check it out if you're interested. I still wanted to talk about it. That's Thursday, November 3rd at 10, 12 a.m. Moving along to the Stifling Dark, a horror board game. Keep your friends close and your flashlight closer. 
in this one versus many hidden movement horror game, which means I won't be getting it because Renee hates hidden movement. <laughs> Their video says, an innovative line of sight mechanic. Yeah, I see the innovation. It's just throw a whole bunch of spaces on the board that nobody wants to ever figure out what the line of sight is. I'm going to look at it in a second. I read through all the rule books after I watch this initial video to get both of the sort of initial perspectives on the campaign and the more in-depth look that is valuable to, hopefully valuable to people who want to know how it plays. Rulebook prototype 50% down the page. And this is great, even though it is a prototype rulebook, I'm just so thrilled that it is here for people to dive into it a little bit deeper and see exactly the game that you are getting. It's easy to get an outline of the game, and this outline of the game <laughs> looks really good, really quite in quite exciting. That innovative, uh, innovative line of sight is just kind of what we saw in Redwood in terms of how you're going to move from last week. You're going to slop down your flashlight, and anything that's illuminated, if, it, if it's an evidence or if it's the killer that's running around will be illuminated, but you can only use your flashlight a certain amount of times. That outline feels really, really fun, but I still like to be able to dive a little bit deeper into it and see some examples of how these things occur, because then you can hypothesize a little bit better on if you'll enjoy it or not. Even this thing right here gives me a little bit more information about the push and pull that the game will happen. You can have stamina, and you can use your stamina to sprint and move a little bit further, but if you don't sprint, then your stamina recharges. And if you do sprint, then your stamina doesn't recharge. So it's this back and forth of how do you let your resources regenerate versus using them. Same with the flashlight as well. And even this feels fun to me, the difference of the spaces. They'll be pitch black, and that's by the dotted circles, and it costs you extra movement to move into. Or there'll be regular circles, or there'll be brightly lit circles, which will adversely affect the adversary. Yeah, this one looks cool. Th this is surprising to me. Uh, a really pleasant surprise here. Hey, you can get an extra base game for a $10 discount, so that means you might want to get some group pledges in there. Reduced shipping of $5 per copy will be added in the pledge manager as well. Get in on a group buy if you're interested. They say you have 16 player standees versus the nine that you would have gotten. Um, I think what's the most interesting here is that there's three different adversaries. That's that's one worth highlighting, that you can have a different adversary like this, the insatiable horror and that being a stretch goal and this being a stretch goal, an additional adversary. Uh, feels feels fun to have those different characters also on the evil side versus just the, the people running around. Shipping is, you know, on the okay end, not the great end. 20 bucks shipping, so it's actually a $70 pledge. And I was thinking 50 bucks feels reasonable for this game. So 70 bucks US total, 100 bucks Canadian-ish, or close to it anyway. And that that's just a bit too much. But this is Halloween. Happy Halloween, everyone. I should have started off the video with that. But it is Halloween today. Um, less important than tomorrow, which is go out early and get yourself 50% off candy at grocery stores who aren't scumbags and just take it off the shelf at midnight so that they don't have to sell it at a loss and just throw it out so you can't have it. <coughs> blah, blahs. If you can get that 50% off on that candy, that's, uh... You know, that's a much more exciting day than Halloween now. So 70 bucks US, I, I don't know. We just had our spooky, scary death match, which if you didn't see that, make sure you check that video out. Because it is Halloween, you want to play a spooky game because you're a human and your heart beats, okay? And you're not a heartless bear. This one actually feels fun. You're going to have to run around and get certain evidence tokens that the adversary will set up and you have to search around and try to find the evidence and just that aspect of, of avoiding this one person and it's like competitive battleship where the battleships are people and they can chase you with a big old knife. I can see how this would be a really fun atmospheric scary game. Certainly better than the Night Cage uh, if you want something with atmosphere. So check this one out. That finishes Thursday, November 3rd at 4 p.m. Moving along to maybe my favorite Kickstarter campaigns ever when they pop up. We have four games about compliments, matching, counting, and noises. Get a box version of four lovely wholesome games for the whole family designed to make you smile, laugh, and feel good about life. And I agree. Bez, one of my favorite campaigns of 2021 was a game about wee whimsical creatures and the noises that they make and just making stupid noises around the table for these weird, interesting creatures. And Bez has done it again with a, 
another pack of of games and i <laughs> the titles well the titles really tell you what the games are all about you're going to draw a creature and then you're going to complement the drawings and then you're going to complement the compliments until everybody just feels good <laughs> i think i liked the we whimsical creatures and a game about f frantically counting beet roots a little bit better than uh, potentially the compliment one i i remember the compliment one being in development but I also just love the feeling behind this complimenting one. And you can get a sequel of that one in this box as well. It's £29 for all four, or it's £9 for one game, and then £7 postage elsewhere, which, honestly, I'm considering... I have the print-and-play for the game about wee whimsical creatures, and I'm not doing it justice, but just look at these... Look at these uh, types of shapes and the sounds that these creatures will produce. <coughs> That's probably that one. These are all the ones that are out there, and I'm gonna make some. Let's see if we can get. No, that wasn't that wasn't a good one. Um, I was thinking of this guy, but that's not his sound. Uh, what about this one? That one was pretty obviously that one, right? <laughs> this is just the stupidest game that I love so so much. The fact that I can get a printed copy sent to me, I'm gonna need to do some serious thinking. 26 bucks to get it to, to my door? Probably I will pull the trigger because I haven't had the time or sourced a place to even print the other ones. And and I, I want these. I just do. <laughs> so I, I highly recommend checking this campaign page out and really thinking if you should get one of these or not. They're not the best explanations. Really, they aren't. But hopefully the explanation is all you really need is, is the title of the game. A game about cute comical creatures and trying to identify them after someone makes noises. That's what I want. And what's also awesome is that there's a subsidized, no questions asked, if you can't afford it but want a coffee, that's there. I want, am I even logged in? I'll, I'll back it right now. I want an actual physical copy of this game because I need to I need to just have it in my bag and I haven't printed it out yet. So, oh, it says five pounds here, but it says seven pounds there elsewhere. Uh, I'm going to go with the seven pounds probably because that's what it's listed here as. But yeah, I just, I think these are just the, the right kind of stupid, you know? They're just dumb fun, and I would highly encourage anyone to check out this stupid Kickstarter campaign, because, oh man, now I can get it shipped, finally. I would have gotten the other one shipped to me, and now that Bez is going to put in the extra legwork to ship it to other places, that makes me really, really excited. So, what a good week. We've made it to the cream of the crop here. And if you're interested in that, sorry, I know you're interested in that, so just be sure you do check it out before Thursday, November 3rd at 6 p.m. <laughs> it's just so stupid. <laughs> There's something so stupidly fun about being an idiot, and that's, that's what I like to do, and making weird sounds, and then complimenting each other on those weird sounds in a genuine way that opens you up. <laughs> Because I think that complimenting one is also a really good game. Not necessarily like a game game, but like a feel-good icebreaker game with groups who are jaded and cynical. I like being sarcastic, and I have a very dry sense of humor, but I, I also like giving genuine compliments to my friends because I'm bad at receiving compliments, but I, I enjoy giving them to make everybody else squirm the way I squirm whenever I get a compliment. So... <laughs> Check that out, November 3rd, 6 p.m. Moving along, we have three games from Board Game Tables, Roll to the Top, Pollen, and Big Top. Let's check them all out. Videos that get me hyped or have music that it designed to get you hyped really just turn me off the entire thing immediately. I don't want the pomp and circumstance. I want just pages of rules, please. I do love board game tables, though, what they put out, because all of their games uh, you can really just distill into these small two-page rule books that I'm grabbing to look at right now so I can tell you how to play. And I think that sort of mandate is exciting, that sort of mandate that they... Uh, have been attempting to move forward on that it's not too complicated that you can always grab them and pick them up right out of the box that's why mountain goats has been such a huge hit and bohemian villages 
which is just mountain goats as well, but a worse version where you have buildings. By the by, the designer of Orléans, though, I just played it recently. That's why it's on the, the front of mind. That's where they fall to the weight side. You want something that is accessible and having something that you can pull out and explain very quickly is very appealing. So this one is uh, roll to the top. You have to roll dice and you're going to use those dice to put numbers in and the numbers above uh, have to be low, higher than the numbers below. And so each one of these six different structures is going to have a different orientation and different numbers that you can put in places and you're racing. But the unique twist on this one is that there's this action die and whenever you roll, you got to do what it says and you add in a dice or you subtract a dice and you move that around the table and so the choice of your turn is how you're going to manipulate that dice pool it seems okay i take back what i say about two pages of rule books this one is weird all right so each person is going to have a different color and you're going to be placing these cards down to form a pattern or you're going to be pollinating that pattern and taking whatever is on the inside if you have the most of that symbol touching it so in this example stars are wild so if you have two stars and two butterflies and then pink here has four butterflies and there's a butterfly in the middle uh then nobody gets it because they're tied and so nobody gets that butterfly but if these butterflies were for example bumblebees well since there's a butterfly in the middle then the butterflies would take it because the butter because the bumblebees obviously don't contribute to that thing yeah i can see the fun of it it, it feels kind of ordinary to me but it looks nice as most of board game table stuff does if you lead the type of meeple so you see this person won bees they get to add up their score of the other things that they have and that's their total score oh this person wins june bugs so their score is six because they're left over with two and four of other things that's an interesting way of scoring as well but honestly not hugely drawn in by that one this might be the best first player distinguisher over on Big Top, the player who is the most terrified of clowns is the first auctioneer. It would be really great is if in these rule books it actually told you what the whole point of the game was before telling you bits of the mechanics. That's stupid. But I don't mind this because the it kind of reminds me of Castles of Mad King Ludwig where you're going to put something out and the other people are going to be bidding on those things and then paying you depending what they bid. So you're going to want to put out cards that people will bid on and then if they bid a specific amount that's related to their previous cards that they have bought, then they get points, but you also get the coins that they spent. I like that a lot. I think this is the one that I am the most interested in. It's also the cheapest one. I'm fairly certain this one's 19, isn't it? Yeah, big top's 19. Roll to the top is 39, and Pollen is 39. I don't think they're worth 39. No way. But big top being 19, $26 Canadian, and... Board Game Tables usually has really good shipping. Yeah, $4 shipping to the U.S. $9 shipping to Canada. Roll to the top? No. Uh, big top? Kind of intrigues me. It would be $28 U.S., $40 Canadian. Uh, probably doesn't intrigue me that much. But if I saw it out at a convention somewhere, I'd probably pick this up. I'm going to keep my eyes for Big Top. I think that one looks good. Roll to the top and pollen. They just look, you know mediocre to find to me but that was a delightful surprise honestly that might be one of the first times i'm really swayed by that simple mechanic so good job board game tables if you're interested in any of those that finishes thursday november 3rd at 11 p.m let's keep moving to dreadful meadows the deluxe edition see i do love this rule book right at the top of the page this is a game all about trickering and treating uh, you can also play it on tabletopia this is a lovely campaign page it tells you the Coles knows exactly how exactly how to play right at the beginning it doesn't slam your head over with the wooden tokens that's gonna for sure come later this is not how you showcase a storage bin though this looks like a horrendous mess all right let's check the let's check the rule book how do you play this looks like a very simple game to play Basically, you're going to have four actions on your turn. You can do one of four things, rather. Uh, you can purchase these patches and expand your network out. Or you can place a sugar sprite and that will grow candy. Or you can purchase a harvester and place that on the board, which will help chain your sugar sprites together. Or you can take your sugar sprites back. That's it. And the whole time you're trying to complete these concoction cards, which will give you points. That's it. Keep on growing this candy confectionary cacophony of something else that starts with c that's a grid 
Oh, I'm tired. And I like how things are going to chain together and how things will pop up on the board. That feels like it will be satisfying as you go along. I don't like that's 50 bucks US, $68 Canadian, and then has $22 shipping, right? So it's actually $72, it's $90 Canadian. Again, too high to warrant really considering. Uh, like, again, it, it looks fun. I like the art. It seems fine. But I think that's what it is. I think it's just a, a fine, cute little game. And for me, I would spend 45 on that and unfortunately not double. But if you're interested, check that out. That finishes Friday, November 4th at 2 a.m. Let's keep pushing along to 911 Operator Board Game. Again, 911 Cop coming in with the rule book closer to the top of the page. I, 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 I know. I, I know I'm greedy. I know I'm greedy. I just want it right here just want it here but they want you to see the pretty pictures and not be the first thing that you click on i get it and i like this game because it really embodies the heart and soul of being a 911 operator which is of course to compete against the other 911 operators and earn yourself that promotion it doesn't matter who gets helped as long as you come out looking great we're not in it to save the people we're in it for the money this is a weird kind of confusing rule book I still don't know, reading through it, if it's actually cooperative because it says, hey, if players can solve the scenario, they win the game. I know it's competitive. It's a competitive game where you're competing to collect the most cards because you're going to be going through this sort of public tension deck and you need to keep that in check or everybody loses, but you want to screw things up for the other people so that you can get the most uh, saves, basically. Well, this is why people don't put the rule book right at the beginning, is if it's a confusing mess that doesn't get people excited about the game, to be fair. What does get me excited is that it's a cheaper price, 29 bucks US, 29 euros, $40 Canadian, 15 bucks shipping, maybe 30 bucks shipping. It's a very broad range. And if you like route planning, that's what you want here. If you really like planning out different routes and, and a board that's going to shift and more traffic will appear every round and you're going to be, roadblocks are going to be happening and you're going to have to manage your various units of your chopper or your bike or your car and how they're going to get around the city and get to the scene of the crime and put, you know, just calm people down. As long as they're there, they're like, listen, we can, we can take care of this problem. Our main problem is just getting there. That's that's the one snag we've been running into this entire time, is just being able to get to the issue first. <laughs> Hence the 911 operator, because you're just telling people where to go and how to get there. I don't know, I wanted to love this, I don't quite. But if you're interested, check it out Friday, November 4th at 7 a.m. Ah, and this is a shame because this is, I had a real roller coaster of emotions going through this campaign. I thought it was going to be another one that I was going to cut. And then um, it actually looks pretty fun. You just pick your food and then you stack it on this little boat. And you want to stack the most food. And if you get the most food, you're going to get the most points and you win. In addition to working with your specific character goals. <laughs> if you're just hangry, you need meat and you need dairy honestly a cute little game that i can't really say too much more about but it's 40 dollars canadian so like 30 dollars us and then like 12 to 21 in shipping so it's like 50 dollars canadian and i own meeple circus i don't need 42 wooden food shapes to balance on some plates i think i would enjoy it this is one of those games where i'm like yeah this game seems very enjoyable I think people would like it, similar to Meeple Circus. Meeple Circus is, is going to be way better, though. And then you get to the price point, and you're like, why would you ever pay that? Is it going to be a flash in the pan? Is it just going to, is it going to have any longevity? Probably won't. Which is a shame, but I, I actually think this one looks fun. So check that one out. That's Sunday, November 6th at 4.12 a.m. If, oops, if you happen to want to get some buffet food into your game night which, of course, you should always want to have a delicious buffet into your game night. You can only eat what you can stack. <laughs> Let me tell you, Mandarin, if you had this rule for me, I would still get as much as I wanted.
All right, let's move on to, I guess, Cats versus Pickles, because it's raised $87,000 US. That's probably just throw throw burrito in a different plushy form. And I guess I can see how people would find this one fun. This is, you're going to draw two cards, you're going to read the card out loud, and you're going to do what it says. And this one, the example is, hold your little plushy and move around like a T-Rex and roar and throw it onto the area and if you get it in the center you win points as far as party games go i understand why people might be gravitating towards this because it's 29 bucks us and 40 canadian and it's only five bucks shipping into the us which i like you want these little plushies sure that might be interesting to you i think if you're looking for a party game hand hand wombat <laughs> feels like that would be way better and it gets that similar sort of party theme. But I figured I'd talk about it and talk, really just look into what it is. And if that interests you, you can go check out the different characters. And you know what? Live your life. Have fun. Hope you love it. That <laughs> finishes next Tuesday, November 8th at 4 p.m. Uh, this should have been a little bit later than our next one. But that's fine. Because let's move on to a game that I actually am very excited to look at and it is legitimately only because of how well big trouble in little china did in our thematic death match and the kurt russell memes that it were floating around and now i think i'm probably backing this without knowing anything about it or having never seen the movie but i'm probably gonna get it until I read about it, and it's actually bad. Just kidding, I've never seen the game, but I just found out you can play as a character named Maggie, so obviously I'm in. For those of you who, like me, might have been unfamiliar with Escape from New York, the president has crash-landed in New York, which has been turned into a giant prison, very similar to The Dark Knight Rises. I think that's what happened. Didn't New York turn into a giant prison? Wasn't that the, wasn't that the brief? <laughs> Maybe it's a big bomb. I forget. I forget everything other than Heath Ledger's incredible performance. But basically, you have to find the president and a special briefcase that the president threw out of the plane <laughs> in a panic as the plane was going down, and then bring them to a bridge and get out of get out of Dodge. But you could also just satisfy your own two personal objectives and then leave <laughs> everyone else behind you. Which, I don't know if you know this about me, but that is the thing that I would do in every single game. Oh, Kurt Russell, you saucy minx. <laughs> and I do like this aspect of the the turn structure. You're going to be managing your hand of cards, and then when you only have one card left in your hand because you have to play two cards on your turn, you then reveal a timer tile. And so the timer ticks down, and that's how the clock keeps going, showing that you've used all your action cards. So you can choose to pull your action cards back if you want it, that timer to keep going down, but everybody's working together on this specific clock, so you want to optimize the cards that you have, and pulling the trigger early is going to be very detrimental. This makes me want to watch the movie. I think this is going to be a fun little romp, where if you are interested in that sort of campy theme, I think, again, it's going to be the theme that's going to be king here. Mechanically, it, seem, it seems all right. You know, it's just moving around the board, controlling various areas, working together, finding key points around the map, and searching for things. It might be a little fiddly, not necessarily fiddly, but little minor rules to remember that that are tied in thematically. But as evidence, even here, when you're collecting the president's card, it says, oh, you have to be in the Duke's camp, but without any enemies at any point, or you can steal it by, I don't know, it feels like a lot. And then New York has to take their turn too. So you have to manage where everybody moves and all the mini villains that come in at you. It's only only an 18 page rule book so i think i'm just getting tired and that's why it's feeling a bit overwhelming the stretch goals though don't seem that significant and when shipping is going to be 25 dollars or 19 or 29 it, it's it's not a low shipping price the fact that the stretch goals aren't that significant if you're not really interested in getting a, a bunch of additional minis to replace the meeples, which just don't do it. These are fine. Look at these fun little meeples. And then your peoples, you're going to want the pictures of these figures. They say figures, but they're standees. But I think by calling them figures, they detract from their other mini offering here, which let me tell you, Maggie's working it. I'll be very honest. Also, very surprising why why they wouldn't throw in three 
boss figures. Sorry, minis, because the boss figures are in the other one. It's a bit of a confusing pledge. I don't think it's worth it to purchase at this current time. Nothing in the FAQ. I think if it's going to retail, which it's raised $2,800,000 Canadian. That's not... Those aren't numbers. Ugh. 211,000 euros. I don't know if that's enough to have a wide retail release or not, but I just don't think the stretch goals make it important to get at all. So this is a wait. This is a wait and see. Even though Kurt Russell has parts of my heart that I never knew existed, it's still a wait and see for me. AKA, look at it, look for it at retail, or look for it when somebody else purchases it, and they go, eh, this is just fine, and it really relies on your nostalgia of the 80s movie, and other than that, it isn't doing anything completely innovative but the theme is going to carry it a long way it really will it's funny enough to be in this sort of new york prison so check that out if you're interested that also finishes next tuesday the 8th at 2 p.m next up we have barbarian kingdoms over on game found and as you can see it's a decent price point you're gonna get some nice stuff with it and they can do that because it's standees and it's not minis and that's why you can have something that's 45 bucks or 60 dollars canadian now this is the deluxe edition. It says it won't be sold in stores. I doubt the retail edition will be sold in stores either because right now it's only raised. Oh, why am I scrolled so far down? $32,000, $34,000, $25,000 euros. I doubt that will be enough for a wide retail release, but what the hell do I know? So it's 45 euros, but it's also 13 to 16 additional if you're in Asia or Europe. 25 additional for shipping for me in Canada. And that's too bad because it puts it at that $70, again, that $90 to $100 range in Canadian, which I was going to say for $45, this feels like a fairly standard area control. The goal of the game is to control seven provinces or kill two kings. And you can kind of see the board. There'll be home provinces that you own, and then you want to go out and try to get additional provinces and fight everybody on the map or murder each other's kings. The most interesting and appealing mechanic of this is in the battle system. There's going to be a bribery aspect to it where you bet a certain number of money that you've achieved and you get that money by doing taxation. That's one of the actions that you can take is taxing the board and taking the resources from the land. And you're going to need to use that money to pay off stuff throughout the game and, and recruit more of your units onto the board you can see the cost kind of listed underneath those units right there but anyway when you're fighting you're going to choose to bribe each other and say yeah yeah I'll, I'll give you 10 coins okay like we can i'll give you 10 coins no problem and that will add to kind of your strength but the key element here and one that i like and one that reminds me of rising sun is that you have to exchange whatever you spend on the battle and I think that makes a really interesting game because you want to commit, but you don't want to overcommit because then you're giving all of that money to your opponent. And if you can convince your opponent that you're really committing and they have to overcommit so that they beat you by just that one coin, and then you scale back and you bet just nothing, then you get all of their income and they sure have won the battle, but you now have those additional resources to stock up your troops and maybe make a different push. And that is really exciting to me. It's not exciting enough for $90 Canadian, unfortunately, because it just seems, you know, I think it seems good, but I think it seems standard. But if you like those sorts of area control stuff, yeah, I think it's worthwhile checking out. The, the rule book is a bit not the greatest, but it's not bad. It explains uh, as much as you need to know, but just feels like it could be a little bit more streamlined or whatever generic thing I can say about the rule book because you're not going to really check me on it. <laughs> I know you're not. <laughs> so I can say whatever I want to. Ah, the rule book, it seems something vague and unspecific so that you know I read it, but not enough to really tie me to anything in case I skimmed it a bit too much since it's one of my last ones of the day. <laughs> anyway, check that one out. That does finish on Tuesday the 8th at 3 p.m. And finally, we move to Gen Pay or Gen Pi. And this is one that I am excited to look into because my patrons said, hey, check this out. They mentioned it on Discord. Uh, wanted to give this one a little bit more love because they think it looks cool. And if they think it looks cool, I know they have impeccable taste. And it honestly gives me the jolt of energy that I need to finish up this video with a fervor I never knew possible. Let's get into it and figure out how to gain influence and claim the throne. And I'll say that the, this video is 
horrible, but it does give you this. So <laughs> not not as horrible as, as other videos could be, but it tells you nothing about the game. So uh, why would you waste my time, Genpei? This is why you're not doing well. Tell us literally anything about what you are. And I do love that five powerful houses are going to decide the future of Japan. Neko, Kitsune, Komainu, and Tanuki. And you! <laughs> Probably you. <laughs> And this one does look pretty neat. You're going to start with a hand of two cards, and you'll have influence in two different clans. And whenever you play a card, you can end up taking an action on their wheel. And how the actions work is that wherever the action token is, so say Kitsune was in the top one, you can move it to the left or to the right to take the action in that track. And so you're going to try to balance how you manipulate these tracks and move the token which will then chain into moving another token because if you buy a card and you buy a card of a specific color then you also get to move that color and then that could chain into a different action and then you could move up on these emperor steps in the middle let's see if there's a better shot of it yeah right here you can move up on the emperor emperor's track which also helps break ties and gives you more influence the more coins you have and the more tokens that you've added to this specific section and so the goal of the game is to have the most influence in all the five different clans the emperor the house of the emperor that's the fifth that was the fifth one that they were talking about at the beginning that i made fun of and you're gonna be chaining these things together to do so it does look fun it certainly doesn't warrant this bonus deluxe edition price yeah you get a velvet bag who cares you get some metal coins i understand how people will like it i think the base game feels like a decent price point 29 bucks 29 euros 29 bucks us 40 dollars canadian the shipping estimates are 10 additional bucks for us and canada eight euros for europe so 39 or 50 dollars canadian that's a decent price point I know it's just a bunch of little tokens and chips, right? But that feels that does feel like a decent price point. I kind of wish they described what the tokens would be. But games where you get to chain those sorts of actions together, and especially play as Tanuki walking by with his little sword behind his back, it feels like a pretty decent price point. And I can see how the gameplay will be fairly fun. I like things where you can chain things together, and I can see this being a satisfying implementation of that chaining system. It says it's unique and innovative, it's chaining system. I don't think that it's unique and innovative, but I think it does look fun, right? So if you are interested in Genpei, check that out. The finish is next Tuesday, November 8th at 4.06 p.m. I, I honestly do think it's a travesty that it only has raised this amount because the actual mechanics of it compared to some of this other garbage that we've looked at this week, like snakes on a train or uh, snakes on a milk tile or the snakes of milk and honey. I guess it's all the same one. Yeah, it, it is a travesty. If you are backing Snakes of Wrath, drop your pledge right now and come over and back Genpei. What else if you, what else should you drop and back Genpei? Familiars and foes? Probably. Outrun the bear? Well, we know how we feel about that. Rising waters? Okay, whatever. Stifling? Um, Anything not big top? Go back Genpei. It'll be a much better game than Roll to the Top or Pollen. Guaranteed. Dreadful Meadows? Yeah, back Genpei. 911? Back Genpei. Buffet? Back Genpei. Cats vs. Pickles? Absolutely. Escape? Yeah, absolutely. Genpei looks fun. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say, um, and I guess that should be it for the week. This is the last one, and we'll go immediately into the pick for me and the pick for you. And wouldn't you know it, the pick for me is going to be Genpei. <laughs> I mean, I kind of have to give it an honorable, an honorable pick because I just went through those things. No, pick for me is not Genpei. Pick for you might be Genpei. It's going to be a tie. Pick for me has to be um, the stuff by Bez. It really does. Because I think I, le I legitimately want a copy that I don't have to print myself. And I I'm willing to pay the price to have a stupid game where I can make stupid voices. So this is for sure the pick for me. Again, it's just kind of an auto pick for me. But I am going to make I am gonna make Genpei a, a secondary pick for me because I'm contemplating it. Uh, the fact that it'll be about 50 bucks to get to my door is the price that I'm, I'm willing to spend. Um, I like supporting games that haven't raised a lot of money. I think this was a good shout out from my patrons. And I'm glad that when I looked at it, I didn't have a different opinion than you guys. Because uh, that would have been made me sad. Yeah, so it's a double pick for me. I could very well back both of these. Uh, but I gotta, I mean, I gotta give it to these, all, these stupid characters for sure. So those are the two picks for me. And I do have a legitimate pick for you. The pick for you being the Stifling Dark. That's why... Oh, oh, it's getting spooky over there. 
Uh, that's why I skipped over it when I said, ah, back Jampay instead. No, if you're backing Stifling Dark, I think this one actually looks fun. I was ready to rag on it for the amount of spots on the board and how I thought it was going to be completely overwhelming. But it doesn't seem like it will be completely overwhelming. And it seems like it will really capture that horror genre really well. And yeah, this one looks it looks good too. So and and at a decent price point in that fifty dollar price point, if I'm remembering correctly, which of course I am because I only looked at it recently. I like the asymmetry of the different villains who will be coming after you, and I think the flashlight mechanic does feel fun in this line of sight scenario where you just kind of cast a swath over everything. You click it on anybody? No, nope, click it off. So that one seems seems fun as well. So we got some good ones this week, even though there was a big slog behind the scenes. We still managed to get through it. Thanks so much for sticking with me. What are you excited about this week? And what are you not excited about? Let me know in the comments below. Let me know if any of these interested you. Let me know if I missed the mark with any of them because I very well could have. Uh, I'm a bit sleepy and a bit delirious. One thing I should say is that the pick for bear is outrun the bears. Um, no, it's actually the opposite because they don't want you to outrun them. So <laughs> I take that back. Uh, let me know what you're interested in as always. I like hearing from you. I, I like hanging out and I appreciate you sticking with it and hanging out with me week after week in this episode 66, my 201st video on a spooky Halloween. Uh, I hope if you're going out trick-or-treating, well, that you crouch and go as a ghost so that people are convinced that you are a small child and can get as much free candy as you want. And if you are above that sort of thing, well, I, honestly, I don't think you belong at this channel because <laughs> that's what I'll be doing this evening. Uh, no, I'll be curling today with my Attack on Titan cape. It's my one day a week where I take a couple hours and stop working and go do something. So I'm going to wear my Attack on Titan cape and zoom down the ice. And I can't wait to do it because it's nerdy and it'll be going to be so cool. So I hope you have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful Halloween. Have an even better day tomorrow, the most important day. Go out and get some of that 50% off Halloween candy. My name's Chris George and I don't have catchphrase but i do have an additional tip is that if you go are going as a ghost make sure you wear gloves because the hands are a dead giveaway i've been caught many many times and now they're always on the lookout for me so i've got to figure out a different costume maybe an r2d2 costume tape my knees and legs together <laughs> it's a free child-sized mars bar what do you expect i'll do there are no lengths i won't go to anyway hope you have a wonderful day and i'll see you in the next one